Are you an agent, supervisor, or manager at a help desk? Are you overwhelmed with too many challenges? Do you feel most of your time is spent responding to customer complaints? Is your boss demanding reductions in the help desk staffing costs? Does your boss realize that reducing headcount may save money but will drive up call waiting times and reduce customer satisfaction in the long run? Are you frustrated that many help desk calls cannot be resolved on first contact? Even worse, once an escalated support ticket is resolved by an engineer, it is likely the help desk is not taught how to resolve the issue when it happens again. Are you ready to improve your help desk processes? If so, let's get started building your new world-class help desk today. The transformation begins by implementing the top seven help desk management best practices by buildahelpdesk.com. Best practice number one, perform a maturity assessment. A maturity assessment compares your help desk structure and process to industry standards and best practices. Performing a help desk maturity assessment has significant benefits. Justify funding. Maturity assessment results are frequently used to justify funding of improvement initiatives and projects. An analysis and recommendation from an independent group usually carries a lot of influence. Reduce costs. You can reduce costs by implementing process improvement recommendations from a maturity assessment. Ad hoc processes consume a lot of time and resources. When a help desk process becomes more efficient, productivity increases, and costs are reduced. Improve customer satisfaction. Customers are more satisfied when their issue is resolved quickly and on first contact. Future growth. When processes are defined, managed, and optimized, it leads to opportunities to support more work. Compliance. Chaotic and reactive support processes can be difficult to audit and lead to more frequent compliance violations. For more information on maturity assessments, go to buildahelpdesk.com, search keyword assessment. Best practice number two, understand the business. How can you support the business if you don't understand the business in the first place? There are two key areas we're going to talk about for this best practice. The first is mission critical services. By knowing your company's business, products, and applications, you can begin to prioritize incidents. It's important that the help desk understands from the business what services are mission critical. Mission critical services are the highest priority. Your department needs to be experts at supporting them. Meet with key stakeholders. Careers are built on a foundation of communications and strong relationships. It is important to collaborate with key stakeholders to be successful. These four key stakeholder groups are your boss, the customers you support, the staff that reports to you, and vendors that have contracts with you. For more information, go to buildahelpdesk.com, search keyword stakeholder. Help desk management best practice number three, implement fair and consistent policies. Managers rely on policy guidance when managing employees. Well thought out policies set expectations for employees to meet. Policies need to provide clear direction. Employee acceptance and policy adherence increases when applied consistently to everyone. Now let's review three important policy practices. First, access to policies. Help desk departmental policies must be readily accessible. Readily accessible means the employee should be able to access and review policies at any time. Second, policy training. To comply with policies, employees must first understand the policies through training. Employees that are new or transferred into the help desk should receive initial policy training. All employees should also receive annual policy training. Third, employee acknowledgement. Once trained, an employee should sign a statement agreeing to comply with the policies. For computer-based training, an electronic acceptance agreement can be used. Documented employee acknowledgement is needed to support a corrective action plan. Solid training documentation and assigned employee acknowledgement will establish that the employee understands the expectations required of them. 
For more information, go to buildhelpdesk.com, search keyword policies. Customers call the IT help desk for three main reasons. One, they call when something is broken. Two, they call when they need to request something. Three, they call when they have a question. We do not want the help desk to provide ad hoc support. Agents should not have to work from memory. Agents need access to repeatable step-by-step -step support procedures. Let's cover five support procedure best practices. One, organizing procedures by IT service can reduce overall call handle time. For example, if a caller has an email issue, an agent can focus their search for procedures related to email. We want agents spending their time fixing issues, not searching for the right procedure. Two, allowing agent feedback can help you identify procedures that don't work. This could be as simple as a review needed checkbox on every procedure. Three, making procedures search friendly can be accomplished by adding keywords to the procedure header. A useful title and summary should be created. A support procedure is only good if an agent can find them. Number four, identify an escalation path if the support procedures fail to resolve the issue. We want escalation tickets to go to the correct group the first time. Number five, make continuous improvements to support procedures. For all escalated tickets, review the resolution steps implemented by the escalation group. Update the support procedures with those steps. Best practice number five, use effective and accurate job descriptions. A job description formally defines the job duties. Job description duties need to have the expectations well defined to hold the employee accountable. A job description is the foundation of an employee performance management program. Agent performance reviews should be based on defined criteria from the job description. Should your help desk staff have one or multiple job description roles? If your help desk size is small with one to five agents, then one general job description is appropriate. A medium to large help desk with 10, 50, or 100 agents may need multiple job descriptions. Only one overall job description role is needed if your help desk is made up of generalists. A generalist is where agents possess a basic or intermediate amount of knowledge about a wide range of technical topics. If you have agents performing specialized work, then you should have multiple job description roles. A specialist will have an advanced or expert level knowledge related to a limited scope of technical and process topics. When an issue cannot be resolved on first contact, where is the ticket escalated to? If an escalation ticket is sent to an external resolver group outside your help desk, then you probably only need one job description role. If an escalation ticket is sent to a Tier 2 agent within your help desk, then you probably need multiple job description roles. One for Tier 1 and a second one for Tier 2. If you have SMEs and process owners inside your help desk team, then you will need multiple job descriptions. Examples are a ticketing administrator or incident management process owner. Does your help desk have an internal career path option for your agents? If so, you will have multiple job descriptions. For more information, go to builtahelpdesk.com, search keyword job descriptions. Managers know that a successful help desk is achieved with knowledgeable and engaged agents. Agent training and development should start on day one. Developing a proper onboarding training program will set up an agent for success. Agent skills need to be maintained and improved. An ongoing training program is needed to maintain agent quality support standards. Ongoing training will also assist employees in incrementally improving their skills. 
Good employee training and development programs require a lot of planning. Trainers are the specialists that plan, schedule, and administer the training program for the new or existing employees. When developing a training curriculum, you must ensure the curriculum is effective. Training curriculum should focus on areas of identified improvements. Depending on the specific subject of the training, effectiveness can be measured. Metrics such as first contact resolution, call handle time, and customer satisfaction can be improved with proper training. For more information, go to buildahelpdesk.com, search keyword training and development. It never fails. Help desk budgets always end up on the chopping block. VPs ask for across the board cuts. Underfunding a help desk is an improper way to reduce costs. Underfunding leads to higher average wait times, lower first contact resolution, and agent burnout. Identifying and implementing improvement projects is the best way to reduce cost. Improvements can be focused on eliminating wasteful activities and increasing efficiency. For example, Moving work from costly engineers to help desk agents can reduce per ticket cost by a factor of two or three. However, improvement projects do have a cost of time and resources. To minimize the improvement project cost, the work could be completed with current staff. By utilizing existing resources during slow work periods, you can minimize the need for costly vendors. You may be able to reduce expenses by revisiting your current contracted services. Renegotiating contracts or changing vendors can significantly reduce operating costs. For more information, go to buildahelpdesk.com. Search keyword budget. Thank you for watching buildahelpdesk.com's top 7 help desk management best practices. You can visit our website for more information. Please subscribe to our channel, click the like button, and share our video. And thank you for your time.